Tennis, invented in 1830 alongside the invention of the lawnmower, as one of the many pastimes used to sate the human desire to hit balls really hard and to determine who can hit balls the hardest and or the best. It is not to be confused with real tennis, which is a similar although distinct sport, which is apparently only played in dilapidated rundown warehouses by elitists who think they're better than you. It is also not to be confused with jeu de pomme, which is tennis, but it's missing one of the three components. After the Napoleonic Wars, all weapons, manlets, and tennis rackets in France were seized by England. So they did the next best thing, which is play tennis, except now you just have to slap the ball really hard. That sounds like it's just volleyball, but I learned long ago not to question the French. It's also not to be confused with long pomme, which is tennis, but it's missing two of the three components. It's also not to be confused with pum, which is tennis, but it's missing three of the three components, and it's just two people slapping each other. When Harry Jem and his best friend Juan Batista Luis Algario Pereira got their hands on a newly minted lawn mower and then immediately tossed it into their servants' hands, they now had a much easier way to keep their lawns maintained to an acceptable height, allowing them to move tennis from the asbestos-infested warehouses into the bright and sunny outdoors. Unfortunately, they forgot to confiscate their servants' old scythes, and since they no longer needed them for lawn care, they mastered the art of the blade and figured out how to use them as small handheld guillotines. After their deaths, Walter Wingfield took the reins of the sport and introduced revolutionary concepts to it, like rules and women. Wingfield's original rule set was quite simple. Hit ball with racket. If ball lands outside the playing field, play is reset with another serve. Keep playing until someone drops dead from exhaustion. The game went through some minor rule changes over its first few decades. First off, once Wingfield decided to start selling box sets of the game to the general public, they foregoed the duel to the death aspect of the sport, instead implementing a more standard point system winner-loser dynamic. It just seemed like poor taste to indirectly murder your cousins at family gatherings. By 1890, things were pretty much set in stone. With any game that's as simple as repeating the two-step cycle of one hit ball, two that's it, there's really no need to change the rules up every century. There's still a net, you still hit a ball, there's a lifeguard trying their best to track the ball and make all the calls. They don't have an official title, but I've heard them called... The question, jerk! You got the absolute pits of the world, you know that? Antonio, one more go. Can I have this person taken out of the show? No, don't They're a disgrace, and everyone here is a disgrace. You can't get a call to even this far out right. If you never worked on a court again, you understand me? You're pathetic, you know that? There's an array of high-speed cameras used to accurately track where the ball is and correct the lifeguard whenever they fuck up. Crazy how tennis has had that technology since 1890, but baseball still refuses to adopt it. You call that a ball? Really? You do this for a living, you piece of shit? Now, the reason this video exists is because, as a Canadian, I've recently taken a great interest in tennis for no particular reason whatsoever. Bianca Andrescu is certainly interesting. At the ripe old age of 19, she's achieved one of the highest honors in tennis, apologizing to Serena Williams for winning the US Open. There have been many promising Canadian ball hitters in the past, so what makes Bianca different? I think the most blatant difference is that Bianca was raised by a Romanian coven and learned their mystical gypsy arts at a young age, and to this day uses the powers of manifestation to achieve her goals, she has the ability to just conjure events in her mind, and it is guaranteed that they will come to pass. The rules set in 1890 make no mention of this type of witchcraft, so the International Tennis Association just kinda has to let it happen. After watching a grand total of three and a quarter tennis matches, I've come to a shocking conclusion. This sport is easy as hell. I haven't done anything remotely athletic in the last seven years, and I think I could still dominate this shit. Not only is it easy, there's a lot of money to be made by anyone participating. Now, we all know Roger Federer is rich because he was on an episode of Sneaker Shopping with Complex and that's my bar to determine whether or not someone has made it in life. But let's not even concern ourselves with the 1% of the tennis world. Let's drop down to like the 3% and look at, I don't know, this guy. Nicola here has a record of 1-1 one and, one and 13 career titles. What? More importantly, Nicola has made 350 grand off of two tennis matches. Now. I'm no math major, so I had my assistant run the numbers, and by their calculations, the average tennis player makes $175,000 per match. What? Get me in there, man! I'll hit a little green felt ball around all you want if you're gonna pay me 150 grand just to show up. Tennis balls are yellow! Don't you fucking start with me. Let's take a look at how expensive it is to learn this game. The average cost for tennis lessons is... Oh, what the hell? That's way out of my price range. 
Oh, I see what this is. Tennis is just another way in which the bourgeoisie keep themselves financially powerful. The elite enroll their children in overpriced lessons, giving them an in to an industry that guarantees them hundreds of thousands of dollars off the viewership of the commoners, whose dreams of reaching a similar stage are systemically made impossible. Well, fine. I know who to turn to in this situation. They're the ones who have always been there for the little guys, looking out for the interests of the people rather than just the elite. I'm of course talking about... Nintendo. Why pay $95 per hour for lessons from some dude born into wealth who now makes thousands of dollars by teaching people how to swing a stick and fucks models? How am I supposed to relate to that, when instead I could pay $80 for lessons from Waluigi who's basically just a fictional version of me? Likes purple, overpriced shoes, lanky ass motherfucker, lonely, it's like looking in an Italian mirror. And these lessons could last an infinite amount of hours, or more likely like 6 hours and I'll get bored, but still the possibility is there. Waluigi has taught me all I need to know to dominate the world of tennis. 1. Have your legs be like 70% of your body. Very important in ensuring that you have optimal mobility. 2. Use a racket infused with some sort of demonic power. I'll have to remember to swing by Bianca's childhood home, see if I can coerce a favor out of them. And 3. Master all the essential tennis shots. Topspin, slice, flat, lob, drop shot, and of course, the kill shot. Alright, I'm ready. Watch out everybody. I'm gonna be the one apologizing to Rafael Nadal and that 2020 Rogers Cup trophy is coming home with me. Yeah, fuck it actually, I'm apologizing to everyone and all four Rogers Cup trophies are coming home with me. And now a word from some of my patrons. Ites Kodal. This is a sport that takes actual fucking work and skill to play. I praise the base god every day that so many attractive ladies play it and that I, a mere incel, am blessed enough to view them compete. Thank you, base god! Johnny Joe Star, ooh yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah, mm hmm, yep. Me when misinformed finally uploads. My name is Kerr. I really don't understand what drives someone to want to become a ball person. Do they just really want to show off their ass to the masses for free? The real young cashew. My wife and her two friends came up to me and asked if I wanted to force them. My wife winked at me and I said yes. Five minutes later, I come out butt naked and they got tennis rackets in their hands. What nonsense is that? Thomas, is this video going to come out on the expected time? No.